All right. Uh, I think we can uh, get the ball uh, rolling there. So um, thanks again, everyone, for, for joining us today for, for this webinar. Um, so um, you will see on French side that we are doing more and more training. So uh, you guys are basically one of the first, uh, I would say, installers or people in the industry attending our 24 hours of Sun Academy. So it's something that we are working on at the moment where we basically have a lot of trainings for you guys. Uh, it will be different topics. So. Uh, we heard in the, in the industry that uh, sharing the knowledge is, is pretty good. And usually when we go out and do our training, um, definitely people say that uh, those values, those, let's say, important knowledge in terms of solar installation is pretty important. So that's where there will be different trainings uh, available for you guys. Also, there will be custom training. So if you guys are interested, maybe for your teams, you want something, let's say, more catered for your for your for your company. It's something that we can do. Sales, technical. You ask a question, and we can provide different setups. So uh, my colleague Pat is is with me today to run this presentation. Um, we both can do also, uh, let's say, live setup of the inverter if required. So that's going to be the next step. Um, as you can see. Well, as a lot of you guys have heard, uh, COVID uh, has set some challenges in front of us. So this year we were planning to go around Australia doing a lot of hands-on training. So that's something that a lot of installers has asked. Um, but we are also ramping with uh, ramping up with sales training. So uh, we will do as much as we can remotely, but definitely as soon as, um, let's say, the COVID um, all the COVID aspect here is over, definitely we're going to start. Uh, to be on the road again. So maybe let's uh, jump in the presentation. So today, what we will talk about will be the furnace tool. So what, uh, um, let's say, uh, software we have in place for you guys and how to manage data is pretty important. Uh, since the beginning with Fronius, uh, we already knew that data was pretty important. And since the first inverter, we already had a, man a data manager to basically start to harvest all the data from the inverter as we know how important it is. So looking at uh, data in general, what we really want to, to have available for uh, installers is this whole cycle let's say this whole sale cycle there so we know we know that installers or sell, or let's say solar companies they plan install product they do the warranty registration the service uh, system and then they put the system online and usually it stops at this stage so then they move to the next sales and then to the next sale so it's basically uh, what we can see as Australia is quite a, a, a let's say an early uh, at the, the really early stage in terms of solar installation. So we can see that it's stopping there. But what we really want to do is provide all those installers, all those businesses uh, out there, a complete sales cycles where you don't only do one sale. It's basically a relationship that you're creating with the customer. And from there, you don't stop at one stage, for example. So today it's really about going through, let's say, uh, repowering the pro the, the system. So when I say repowering, it, it can be basically maybe exchanging for an, from an old system, but it can be like adding, uh, let's say, more more solar power to, to the system. And then from there, going into storage and, and let's say, doing the planning again. So uh, today we will cover mostly those, those two parts. So before we jump and look at the solution, as I mentioned, uh, before most installers or most companies out there are basically stopping at this monitoring and some of them are not even putting the, the system online. So what uh, we're going to cover today is what are the benefits for you guys to basically uh, harvest all this data and monitor the system and what we have ready for you guys. So it's basically equipping your sales team, your, your installers for the future installation or the future requirement for customers. So um, we both, uh, we all know uh, there that in data, there's always uh, a dollar value. So uh, a good example is Facebook. So Facebook is free, yes, but you're entering data. It's learning what you guys like on Facebook, or what, what link you're clicking. So it's really collecting a lot of data about yourself. And I'm pretty sure 
a lot of you guys use uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. So it learns a pattern in a way. Solo is not as in in depth as as uh, this level, but definitely with solar we can harvest uh, this information, and this information can help installers size the system correctly. Can actually see what what the system is doing. Uh, the best way I would say is basically driving your car uh, at night with your light on, right? So that's the that's I would say the best uh, comparison. So here with our product. Uh, all the let's say residential product uh, has a data manager card in in that and from there with the monitoring card you can do a lot of third party interfaces integration you can do that mod bus communication so i would say let's say if you have those customers who are already in depth with let's say programming a lot of smart things around their their house and they want to make different appliances to talk to, to each other uh, our inverter uh, can definitely do it. Um, and also with this data manager card, we can do uh, power control function, which is export limiting, for example, and we can also do energy management uh, system. Also, we use this card to alert us if anything goes wrong with the system, but also sending reports to, uh, to the customer. So we also know that uh, it's really important to increase the data because if you increase the amount of data coming through, it also increases the dollar value that you're getting out of the of the system. So, uh, while how you can basically increase the amount of data and, and also see clearly what is happening on site is using from your smart meters. So the first one that we're going to have a look is the 63M single phase. So this is a direct connect a smart meter, and for this one you don't need CTs. Then you also have a 240 UL meter. Uh, this one is basically CT based and the type of CTs that you will need is 333 millivolts. So this meter, for example, if you don't have space in the switchboard, that's one a good option and you just buy a CT uh, for it. Uh, we also have three phase uh, smart meters. So we have a 63 amp direct connect. So the same as the single phase, but three phase. Then we have a 50K smart meter, which is uh, basically, um, basically uses 5M secondary CTs, but also face to face. This one does 415 volts, so that's where you need to be really careful if it is a true free phase. Um, you also have a 480 UL meter, which uses basically 333 millivolt uh, on the on the secondary uh, output there. So the difference between those those two meters are uh, basically the CTs that they use. So this one uses five amps and the other one uses 333 millivolt. And if, for example, you have a swirl line, which is basically face-to-face -face, uh, 480 volt, this meter will be the best. When it comes to C to meter selection, I always recommend that. It's just easier to for me uh, to install. Uh, if something is not installed correctly, it's easy to diagnose on the meter itself. So that's my uh, recommendation. So with this particular meter, what you can actually do is energy management. So what does that mean is, let's say you have an excess of power com uh, coming from your PV, you can say, okay, if I'm sending 1000 watt to, uh, to the grid, turn a load on so that I don't send the power to the grid. So that's where you optimize, let's say the system uh, as much as, uh, as you can. So, what we really want to provide to the installer is this whole cycle that I showed before where, okay, you optimize, but you need to also uh, look at future requirements that we will uh, have a look uh, shortly. So it's really uh, important to understand some storage basis before we go and jump into, okay, what battery do we need? Uh, is battery, does battery, uh, batteries make sense? Um, the first thing that you need to really understand is self-consumption and self-sufficiency rate. So self-consumption is basically how much energy you're using directly from the, the solar and self-sufficient rate is basically how independent you are from, from the grid. So just to show you uh, an example. So here we have a system uh, which is basically just produ producing power during the day. Um, in blue, you can see how much they are feeding uh, into the grid. And in uh, gray there, you can see how much they're using directly from the, from the uh, solar. So this is one of the interesting side because 
we went back to the customer and we said, look, why don't you install uh, basically a contactor which gets connected to our data manager card. So it's just an external contactor. And then from there, our data manager card can send a signal to this contactor to say, okay, I have an excess of power, please turn on. And so that's what we did. And instead of sending power to the grid, we basically send power to this uh, hot water system, for example. And that's how you increase your self-consumption, so how much you use directly from the solar. Also, uh, the other option is self-sufficiency. So what is self-sufficiency is basically how independent you are from the grid. So if you look at this particular system, here in green is basically the power from the battery. If there was no battery there, this part will be basically red, meaning that you're using power from the grid. And this gives you an indication, for example, how independent you are. So basically more green you have there, what it basically means um, how independent you are from, from the grid. So this is where when you go to a customer, it's really important when they ask you, hey, I want to have a battery. It's really good to ask, why do you want to have a battery? Do you want to have a battery to be independent from the grid? Or do you want to make the most of your system? Because the first step that usually people should take is optimizing. Try to use the most amount of energy from their solar first. And then from there, install a battery if they still have excess of power. So there is a stage now. Let's say if you look at the whole cycle, as I mentioned, we recommend that you optimize the system first. So you do a bit of energy management. After doing some energy management, if you have a Fourier smart meter installed, you will be able to do some simulation using our Fourier uh, solar web portal. So this is currently available for uh, all users. If they have a smart meter, then they can run this simulation. Just to give you an example, so I have the system here. How do I know it has a smart meter? I can see the bubble view here. And then from there, what we do, is we go and click on uh, analysis. Then from there, there will be all those options. Of course, those two are internal for Fronius employees, but you will see a simulation button on the right hand side. And when you click on this simulation button, you have two options. So you can, you can select one where you say you have a heating element where you want to optimize the system first to divert the excess of power, for example, or you have another option where you have uh, a battery simulation. And most of the time, what we see is people will just go directly to the battery uh, storage simulation because most of the time they already did uh, some energy management uh, beforehand. So here you will see that you can simulate different sizes of batteries. Of course, those batteries are whatever is compatible with uh, Fronius. And here you can see BYD, uh, BYD uh, HV six kilowatt hour. And you can also see how uh, self-sufficient it is. So this percentage basically uh, determine uh, how, how independent you are from, from the grid. So here, what you will need to do is select whatever battery you want. So for example, here, I chose this uh, 6.4 uh, 6 kilowatt hour battery, and then I press simulate. And then from there, I can have different values. So for example, then if I change it to a 22 kilowatt hour battery here, you can see that the um, self-consumption has uh, gone up a bit. So just to show you the difference here between uh, a 6.4 kilowatt hour and a 22 uh, kilowatt hour there. So you can see the increase in self-sufficiency. So that's where it is really important uh, to, to have a look at those uh, different stages because this basically can be another lead coming in your way. So if you look at the whole picture, yes, there's a lot of, of solar system being installed with Fronius. The question is, are you installing a smart meter? Because if you're installing a smart meter, later down the track, you can come back to the customer saying, hey, I think you're ready for, for a battery now. And with this particular battery, this is basically how independent you will be from the grid. Not only that, it also helps your installer saying, hey, look, everything is already there for me. I can already size the battery. So it's, it, it basically built confident, confidence with data that has already been uh, inputted there. 
So uh, then there is a repowering uh, and storage phase, which is basically this part is, should I add more, uh, more PV, for example? Uh, and then what are the storage solution that I, that I shown before? So uh, those particular option there will be basically an option with our new inverter, which my colleague uh, Pat will, will cover now. So I will pass that to you, Pat. You should be able to present um, your screen now. All right. I think you should be able to see my screen now. Turn on my laser. Yes. Off. Okay. So, uh, yes, I'll be talking about the Gen 24, as Seb said. So it's a really uh, unique and versatile product. Um, so there's the, the Primo and the Simo Gen 24, we've kept the same names. So Simo being single phase and the Simo, uh, so Primo being single phase and the Simo being for uh, three phase applications. So the Primo has power classes going from three to six kilowatts and the Simo has power classes going from six to 10 kilowatts. They both have two trackers and also one battery input. So looking at the battery options, um, Seb was saying how, you know, you will be able to do potentially batteries at a later stage for some customers. So with the Gen 24, uh, you can definitely retrofit a battery at a later stage if that's what a customer wants. If they say, hey, don't want a battery right now, but maybe I want one in the future. So that's also a possibility. And of course, um, you can also use the Gen 24 with or without a battery. So at first, uh, the batteries that will be compatible will be the BYD battery box uh, premium, HVS, and HVM. So here you can see uh, some of the um, specs of the HVS. So it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, it's modular, so it goes from two to four modules, uh, ranging from 5.12 to 10.24 kilowatt hours of storage. And these are retrofittable. So if the customer wants to start out with a lower amount of storage and then increase it at a later date, that's possible. And it basically goes up in 2.6 kilowatt hour steps. In terms of the installation, it's, uh, it's quite an easy system. It's a ground mounted system and also has quite an easy commissioning process. Then looking at the HVM. So again, it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. Again, it's modular, but this time it goes from four to eight modules and the storage capacity is from 11.04 to 22.08 kilowatt hours worth of storage. Again, uh, these are retrofittable. Um, the steps are almost the same. Uh, they go up in 2.8 kilowatt hour steps. And again, uh, in terms of the installation, it's a ground mounted system and quite easy to commission. So here we have uh, what we call the cheat sheet. It kind of uh, sh shows you some of uh, the differences between the HVS and HVM. So as you can see, uh, the storage capacity is a lot greater with the HVM. So it goes up to 22.1 kilowatt hours worth of storage, whereas the HVS uh, only goes to 10.2 kilowatt hours worth of storage. Now, looking at the, the largest batteries in each category, so the 10.2 and the 22.1, you can see that the rate at which they can discharge and charge, say on a SIMO 10, you can do uh, nine kilowatts at a time. But, however, if you were to compare uh, two of around the same size between the, the categories, so say the HVS 10.2 and the HVM 11, you can see, as I said, with the 10.2, uh, you can charge or discharge nine kilowatts uh, at a time, but with the HVM11, you can only do 4.49 uh, kilowatts at a time. And we think this is gonna be quite important in terms of how installers explain to their customers what they're actually getting. Because this charging, discharging capability is quite important in terms of the efficiency of the system, You know what the system can actually do. So here um, we have a, a slide talking about our multi-flow technology. I was talking about the charging and discharging of the battery and the multi-flow technology comes into play. So with some inverters out there, some hybrid inverters out there, you can either send power to your loads um, or you send power to your battery to charge it. Um, but with the multi-flow technology um, in our inverter, you're able to do this at the same time. 
So you can send power to the loads and at the same time send power to the battery to charge it. So if you were to say take a Gen 24 SIMO 10, uh, you can actually oversize that and have 15 kilowatts uh, attached to it. So you could send 10 kilowatts worth of uh, power to the loads and then uh, use the remaining five to charge the battery. And this feature will function even if the grid goes down. Uh, so yeah, if the grid goes down, that multiflow technology is still there and you can uh, send power in different directions at the same time. Then if you were to consider situations where you have a third party inverter on site or perhaps another Fronius inverter already installed, you could say, uh, uh, for example, charge your battery from the panel steer through your Gen 24 uh, and at the same time, send power uh, to charge a battery uh, from these panels to this inverter on the AC side. Then you could potentially uh, send power uh, from the panels here through your Gen 24 to your loads. At the same time, you could send power from your battery through your Gen 24 to the load. And if you wanted to, you could potentially send power from the panels here at the same time uh, through this inverter to your loads, perhaps if you had uh, quite a big load on site. And then also you could say charge uh, the battery from the panels here and then also uh, from the grid side. So quite flexible in terms of what you can do with uh, the multi-flow technology. And basically with this multi-flow technology and the high discharging and charging capability of the battery and the high input current on the inverter, it basically uh, allowed us to win this uh, award. Uh, so we won first place at the energy storage inspection in Berlin and um, got quite a high overall efficiency with BYD. So it was the best result of all time, um, which we were quite happy about. So in this next section, I'm gonna talk about how the Gen24 provides a security in the event of grid outage. So we are talking about uh, flexibility of the inverter in terms of power flow. The next step is to look at a backup solution because that's also another important point for a lot of customers. Um, what is quite important for us is that we have an inexpensive solution. So often doing backup with a hybrid inverter, there needs to be some rewiring done and this can bring further costs. Um, but with the Gen24, there's also an inexpensive option as well. So that customers are able to maintain this energy independence. So we wanna give options again, again, being flexible, uh, you can do backup with or without a battery is quite unique to the Gen24. Um, so you have the full backup option or you have what we call the PV point. Uh, so you can see that there. So basically what the PV point is, it's a dedicated GPO that's connected directly to the inverter. So inside our inverter, we have a special dedicated output for this. And it basically receives power if the grid goes down. So it only functions if the grid goes down. And then when the grid goes down, uh, the customer will need to manually plug in their devices, to that GPO. And then when the grid comes back up, no need to do anything, it'll automatically reconnect. Now the maximum that can be supplied to this GPO is three kilowatts and that's on a single phase. But it's, you know, it's a really in easy installation process. As I said, don't need to rewind anything in the main switchboard, don't need to install a backup switch. Um, the inverter itself is the point of isolation. So here you can see a diagram of kind of how that works. You've got the grid there, you have your inverter, you have your panels here, a battery in this case, the loads, and then the PV point. So as I was saying, there'll be an, an AC output to your loads and then a secondary one uh, to the PV point. So if the grid goes down, you can see the inverter will isolate this part of the system. And then basically you can send uh, power from your panels to the PV point. And then again, multi-flow technology at work. If you do have a surplus of energy, um, you can send power to uh, the battery to charge it. And then say if uh, in, a, in a grid outage a scenario where you weren't getting enough power from your panels and you had some in your battery, you're able to discharge from the battery to the PV point. So 
uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's quite good in terms of uh, what you can do there as a simple backup option. So here we have the full backup option. Uh, so as you can see, there's a backup switch uh, installed. Um, so if the grid goes down, basically this backup switch will then open and then you can send power to charge your battery, also send power to, uh, to your loads. Uh, at the same time, that's the multi-flow technology again coming into play. Uh, and then yes, if you don't have enough uh, power from your uh, panels, then you can also use your battery to um, send that to your loads. And you know, most likely with uh, SIMO 10, you probably wouldn't have to split up essential and non-essential loads. Obviously it depends on the site and how big the loads are. But as you can see, um, there's a few options there in terms of backup, uh, three different options, and the customer can choose what uh, best suits their needs. Okay, so this next section is about how the Gen24 can integrate with uh, other devices, other third-party devices. Um, we wanna make sure that we have open interfaces so that it's really easy to integrate uh, or talk with these other third-party devices. Um, so, you know, home automation systems or EV charging stations, you know, electrical cars are becoming more and more popular. Uh, and, you know, we want to make sure that our uh, inverter can communicate with these other devices. So it's basically, again, you know, maximizing that energy sufficiency and helping customers to make the most of what they have. So in terms of the interfaces on board, uh, so we have your uh, LAN and Wi-Fi. Yes, um, just on that point, um, so you can see on the Gen24, there's actually no screen this time. So we've taken away the screen. There's a button here. Um, and just when you're doing uh, commissioning, it's actually a, a much easier process. Uh, so all you have to do is uh, click that button three times and then uh, you go to the customer's modem, uh, press that three times as well, and it'll sync together. So uh, quite, an, uh, quite a simple uh, setup process. Uh, so there's actually a, a video out there that will also show that. Um, so then we also have the Modbus RTU and TCP. We've actually doubled the amount of Modbus ports on the Gen24. So you can have two devices connected. So say a Fronia smart meter, and then maybe another external controller. Uh, and then there's usually the Cat5 or Cat6 uh, cable for communication there. Then we have digital IOs, inputs, outputs. Um, so with these, you can do um, control of different devices by basically sending signals to these devices. You can do up to six devices with the Gen24. Uh, so a lot of flexibility there. And then uh, we also have the Fronius Solar API, which is mainly um, talking with our servers. So yeah, quite, quite a lot of options there uh, um, in terms of interfaces. And then looking at uh, energy flow uh, management. So, you know, I mentioned the digital IOs before. Uh, as I said, you can control up to six devices uh, to turn on and off, and you can uh, prioritize these. So you can only do four for the current range, the snap inverter range. Now you can do up to six. And uh, usually you're um, using these for big loads, like, you know, the hot water system, uh, pool pump, but uh, it's really up to the customer what they want to control and it's quite flexible. And again, it helps to maximize their self-consumption. All right, so now I'm going to talk about the ease and flexibility uh, in terms of planning and design using the Gen24. So uh, yeah, looking at the specs here that relate to that, uh, it's, it's, it is really easy and you know um, quite flexible in terms of the, the planning. So looking at the Primo Gen 24, uh, you know, you've got power classes going from three to six kilowatts, so four options there. It has quite a broad voltage range. Uh, so the MPPT voltage range goes from 65 to 530 volts. Uh, the normal Primo uh, has a starting voltage of 80 volts, so 
Um, this one has a lower startup voltage, you know, we've worked on that a bit and therefore makes it more flexible. Uh, you can have, you know, a, a minimum of three modules. Um, it's possible to start up the inverter, obviously, depending on the modules that are installed. Uh, but yes, quite flexible in that regard. So two trackers, uh, one more tracker than, uh, you know, the uh, Snap Inverter Simo uh, hybrid. So uh, more flexible there. It's got quite a high input current uh, on uh, one of the trackers of 22 amps and then 12 amps on the other one. So uh, if you want, you can parallel everything to one tracker or do a 50-50 split. Um, uh, it's, yeah, that's also possible. I mentioned the, the charging and discharging of the battery uh, before and um, how efficient that is. And that's um, because of this high uh, battery input current as well we have there. And then uh, all of the Gen 24 series, you can oversize them by 150%. So say in this case, if you had a Primo uh, 6, you could attach nine kilowatts to it. So quite flexible. Then looking at the SIMO uh, Gen 24, it has power classes going from six to 10, three options there. Again, a broad voltage range. Um, uh, the MPPT voltage range goes from 80 to 800. Uh, this time, so um, quite an improvement. Uh, again, you know, if you if you look at our Snap Inverter Simo 10, uh, the startup voltage is uh, 200 volts. So uh, quite a quite an improvement. And again, obviously depending on the type of panels, you can start it up with a you know with just only three panels. Again, two trackers, quite a high input of 25 amps on one tracker there, and then 12.5 amps on the second, and then again, a high battery input of 22 amps. And as I said, you can oversize this as well by 150%. All right, so I was talking before about how you would only uh, need three panels uh, to start the inverter, and you can even potentially use this feature with um, scenarios where, where you have a bit of shading and isolate those impacts if you want. But we also have the dynamic peak manager, which is integrated into the inverter. So basically uh, what this is, it's an algorithm and it scans the power curve every 10 minutes from open circuit voltage all the way to short circuit current uh, to find the optimal operating point. So it scans the whole curve. Um, some inverters um, will find this first peak and stop there, which was, I'll show you in a sec, um, our inverter scans the entire curve. So, got a video here. So as you can see, uh, yep, that first point um, is the lower one, and but our inverter will find the second point, which we call the global maximum power point. And as I said, it's doing that um, every 10 minutes since getting the whole curve. So it's constantly adjusting to make sure it's working at uh, the best operating point. So then uh, in terms of how the Gen 24 performs with heat, look in Australia, it's pretty warm here. We know that, <laughs> you know, maximum ambient temperatures can go very high over 40, over 45 in places. Uh, so it's for us, it's, it's really important that we have an efficient cooling system. So we have this active cooling technology on board. And basically we know that, you know, uh, electrical components will um, have a, a longer lifespan with this active cooling technology, all right? Uh, we also know that electrical components will have power derating occurring at higher temperatures. So active cooling gives better performance and also gives better yields. So this equates basically to less costs overall for the customer, this greater longevity that you get out of the product and you know more production. Also in terms of um, you know, say passive cooling systems where you might need to maintain it and clean out the heat sink, you don't need to do this with um, with our with our system. So here you can see uh, there's a little uh, animation there of uh, what the inverter looks like with the cover off. So we've uh, improved our active cooling. So basically there's a, a larger heat sink now and also a, a larger fan. So those two factors, the, the larger heat sink and uh, the larger fan means that 
it's it's a much more efficient cooling process and we don't even need to to run that fan at 100 percent capacity so i'll now hand it over back to seb who's uh, gonna run us through the installation of the gen 24. thanks pat for uh sharing all this information so let me present my screen uh, in uh, show a screen all right so um yeah thanks again pat for really good information about cooling and features of the inverter so that was uh, pretty pretty good so now let's have a look at the installation uh and and a bit more about the, the inverter itself so uh you guys uh i'm pretty sure some of you have seen it uh, but for on our side at Fronius, we really took a lot of feedback in regards to our inverter. We know how the SNAP is, is popular in terms of installation, but uh, we actually took a lot of feedback from, from the uh, installers. So one thing that we, we heard was uh, when it comes to installation, installing uh, the inverter, uh, you guys had to remove the inverter from the box, then remove the wall bracket, put the wall bracket on the wall, and then uh, do basic drill through the hole and put a wall bracket there and stamp the inverter in. So what happened is um, we heard about it. We said, okay, we need to improve that because it will also improve the time spent on site. So uh, with our inverter now, we are packing everything so that everything comes out of the box in order. So I'm pretty sure uh, as has all a lot of install like it, uh, the installation manual is the first thing that comes out so that you they, they can have a read and basically uh, follow the process of how to install it, but uh, there's basically, let's say, four main steps there. The first one is uh, get the wall bracket on the wall. So this is basically uh, this uh, black part there. And from there, after that, you have the inverter itself. So you can see that this part will go back on the top and we call it again like a snap uh, feature where this part will just snap on this uh, wall bracket. And you have those small features there just to lock the inverter in place. So you will just need to bend that a bit to remove the inverter from the wall bracket. Uh, after that, you have the connection cover. So this connection cover that, that goes on top of here where you have all your DC cabling and the new monitoring card there. Um, the way that this is screwed on top is also using 180 degree screw. So it's really fast and efficient to remove that. And the cover is basically two screws at the bottom. So as you can see, again, uh, we want to make things efficient on site. So let's maybe go through, through the process. You have a six hole there that you can use. Please don't drill through the plate, use the holes there. From there, you snap the inverter in. So that's where we, we kept this snap feature and 180 degrees uh, screw there. So you don't need to use drill machine. And it says there, don't use drill machine, really important. So that's where if you need to remove or put the inverter back, it's a fast process. Also in terms of DC and AC cabling, we have spring connection now. So this part is basically uh, where your DC and AC are at the back here. And it's really easy to, to remove it if you need to service the unit. And also the cables, you don't need to use any torque tools or any type of tools. You just put your cables in and just snap that uh, in. I did one myself, I have one behind me. It's uh, pretty straight straightforward. Then it, when in terms of commissioning, we heard uh, a lot of, we got a lot of feedback, but we heard also a lot from the market. Uh, we have a new app coming out soon. It's already out, but we are, we're gonna start to promote it uh, pretty soon. Uh, with a new inverter, it will be a big benefit because the process of setting up the inverter will be really, really fast. Uh, you can up, um, download the software uh, on your phone and then upload it to the inverter also. That's something new that we are bringing. This is will be for, for the Gen 24. Um, and also Pat mentioned the WPS uh, feature where you just press the button a few times on the inverter, a few times on the, uh, on, on the modem and they sync together. You know, we really wanted to have this process really fast and all everything in terms of setting up the grid settings and parameters, everything is done then on your, on your phone. So we wanted something really fast and definitely there are videos online, you can see um, demonstration about that. But I will mention a bit more of what we are planning also for commissioning to, to help you guys. Uh, one important part is also servicing of the inverter. 
um, I always tell all the customers that I talk to about how young uh, Australia is in terms of solar installation and you compare that to Germany or, or other places in Europe, uh, those guys have been through the, the whole the whole lot and they have a lot of, uh, I would say, solar installation and you know, Fronius also have a big market share in those country. One important thing, but for example, I can share with you what we heard from, from the German guys, uh, that now um, people are more considering service because uh, nowadays servicing the car and servicing a solar system is pretty similar. So you know, in the future, all the system that you have installed will need to be serviced. The piece of electronics, same as your laptop, your, your TV, same thing, it will need at a point of time. And that's why it's crucial that we don't want you guys to spend a lot of time on site. And basically what we have is the way that we have designed the inverter. Uh, there's only one board that you need to change, which is this big power stack there, but you just remove. Uh, and then from there we have uh, the new monitoring card. So this is uh, basically if you need to change it, but uh, I would say uh, more of the power, power stage that we'll need to pay attention. Then from there, everything is on, on this. Uh, it's something that we really work on and make sure that the service is, is here for you guys uh, and reduce the downtime of, of the system. So this is pretty important and that's where we make things better with this new uh, Gen 24 unit. So this will be, I would say, the fastest service on site. Uh, really easy to change the component. You will get notified if something goes wrong for your phone, of course, and there are troubleshooting step on solar web. So the whole plan is that you guys basically do only one uh, trip to site. So that's the, the whole goal. You can still do that with our current snap inverter. This is just something that we added uh, with the Primo uh, Gen 24. Also, one thing that we hear from them, uh, we, I heard, I think, one or twice in some of those trade show is some people were saying, hey, you know, if you look at the inverter compared to other inverters on the market, it's a bit, I would say, bigger. Uh, yes, it is bigger if you look at the total size. But the thing is, if you look at the inverter itself, it's a really small portion. It's around here. I would say two thirds uh, is basically the inverter. This one third that we have, through the inverter, which is basically empty space, is for installers. We know that they, need, they like to have space to do the wiring, to bring the cables in. They like, they really like that. So that's what we didn't want to compromise with size. We really want to make sure that our installers still enjoy uh, installing the, the inverter. So just just to to go back to why do we did we uh, bring this uh, inverter out? Of course, the market has asked for for a hybrid inverter, but we really, we really needed to understand uh, what our customer wanted from the product. And if you look at uh, our service that we do, usually uh, when it comes to, to customers, they really want to have a green energy future uh, power source uh, through their house. They want to make sure that they maximize of whatever they buy uh, and put on their house. They want to make sure that they can uh, use, uh, let's say, uh, energy at a later stage. They want to be independent. I was, uh, there was this uh, Smart Energy Council last week where they mentioned about how tw by 2025, there will be more electric cars. So uh, using basically the energy through mobility will be an important point. Then from there, if you look at the package, what they ask is a smart overall system. Uh, it was pretty funny. I can see now here in Australia that uh, kids are starting to learn programming. So you can see who your future customer will be. And that's what we are trying to get to get ready there. And that's something that we, we want. And how do we, we bring that in our product? We want to make sure that they are, they are reliable. We want to make sure that they have a lot of options uh, from, uh, from maximum self-consumption where uh, Pat mentioned uh, energy management. We want to make sure that there is a battery option uh, for them, make sure that they have an inexpensive backup solution, making sure that they, uh, they are intelligent interfaces because that's how your customers want to integrate different uh, devices. So that's pretty much it for uh, for now. So this is where we bring our Furnace Gen 24, which is, uh, which let's say all uh, solution, all in one solution. Um, one thing that I, I wanted to, to mention before before we start to take some, some questions there is um, the commissioning part. Uh, we didn't show you guys, let's say, uh, all the steps 
Uh, the reason is that next week we are running a um, a setup, a live setup demo. Uh, we will have experts from Austria. They will have experts from BYD International to show you guys how to wire and install the uh, Fronius uh, Gen 24. So what we will do is a real live system that we're going to install, inverter, meter, battery, and show you guys how it all works together. So we will be powering the inverter. We will be uh, turning on off loads on site so that you can see what's happening. So we're going to do everything from scratch. So that's uh, there should be some information on our website, but definitely uh, invite you guys to, to have a look. Um, that's pretty much it, I would say, on our side. So if you guys have any question, yeah, just go to the questions section and yeah, you can throw any information. Pat and myself will be there to answer your, your questions. All right, um, looks like there is one question. Um, how many roof aspect we have installed with uh, with the new inverter? So you can have different uh, orientation. You can have four different orientation to one tracker if you want. Uh, so this is basically paralleling a string from if I understood the, your question uh, correctly. So with uh, to one tracker, you can have multiple uh, orientations. So we have a white paper talking about it. So you can have three, four, three up to you. Um, yeah. That's that's pretty straight straightforward. Got another question um, there, Seb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we do we Go need external DC isolators with these inverters? Uh, no, you don't need to have any external DC isolators. So uh, we are currently writing the letter, but we already have units installed in Australia and they all comply with the, so basically you don't need any external DC isolator. Okay, thanks. The next one is date for availability in Australia. So the SIMO, the Gen 24 SIMO is just about to hit our shores. You can actually start putting in orders now. Uh, for the Primos, we're hoping at the end of quarter one, but we'll send through another update on that. Another one, okay, do we need any extra device to operate hot water or any other energy devices? Um, yeah, you don't, you don't need to have any extra device. Uh, uh, you will need one, which is a contactor, which costs around $70, I would say, or less than $70. And if you want to do, let's say, an efficient energy management system, it's really good to know how much excess of energy you need. So if you if you want to know how much excess you want you you have on site, you will need to have a smart meter installed in the main switchboard. Uh, this energy management you can do it without a smart meter, but it's not really efficient. So you will just say turn on by production. So if my system does four kilowatt, turn on. If my system does three kilowatt, turn on. So it's not really efficient. Um, so the best thing is for your inverter, for your smart meter. You buy a conductor, which costs, I would say, $50 to, to the max. And then from there, uh, from there, the data manager will talk to, will send a signal to this conductor. So nothing from, no, um, nothing from, from Fronius, I would say, just this, uh, um, this conductor. Okay. Uh, do we need specific Cat5 or Cat6 cables for comps? Mm, yes, for the uh, so from the Simo Gen 24 or Primo Gen 24 to the Fronius meter, you will need uh, to do Modbus RTU, which is CAD 5, CAD 6 cable. Yes, that's right. And can the system be controlled to operate uh, to provide solar smoothing function? Uh, I, from what I can understand from source moving quiet function, I think uh, I think you mean this energy management, if I understood correctly there. Uh, so peak shaving, yes, you, you can do you can do that. So any excess of power you divert to this to the system. This is from what I uh, understood there. Um, there's maybe another one. Can we use LG Chem or only BYD but? Uh, so to start off with, it'll just be BYD. 
um, and then hopefully, you know, uh, we'll be able to integrate LG Chem, but to start off with only BYD. Yeah. Uh, is there any price difference in Gen 24? Um, yes, there, there, there will be a price difference. This is a new product, more features, easier to install. Uh, it's really packed with a lot of, of different things that you can do. So there are, uh, there is a price difference. Uh, we don't have any exact price on uh, on our side, but uh, if you can contact a sales partner, they can give you, uh, let's say, a, a, a more exact value. But definitely, it will cost uh, more than a normal a normal uh, snap inverter. Great. Okay. And does the PV point only work during daylight without a battery? So yes, without a battery, then you'll need. Um, you'll need sunlight there to, to make it operate. Obviously, if you have a battery, uh, once the sun goes down, then you could supply that PV point in, in the case of grid outage. Yes. So there's another question. Um, so if we have extra energy in five kilowatt inverter and system of 6.6 .6 kilowatt, is there uh, extra energy of 1.5? So um, if you have a five kilowatt inverter, then the Freya smart meter will measure on the AC side. So if you have a five kilowatt inverter, it's doing four kilowatt, for example, and the excess of energy is one kilowatt. That's basically the amount of extra energy that you have. And from there, you can decide if you can turn uh, loads on or off. So we don't look on the DC side, it's only on the, on the AC side, how much extra energy we have on the AC side. This is for, for the energy management system. I think this question was for the energy management system. And I think the question was related to, can we use, uh, sorry, Pat, uh, can we use energy management for hot water or pool heaters? Yes, so any any load you want to turn on and off, it's basically excess of power. Instead of, of you sending this power to the grid, you send it to this, uh, to this hot water or pool heaters, for example, just by turning them on or off. Okay, and then if, a SIMO exists on site, can the SIMO Gen 24 turn back on the existing SIMO that turned off uh, when the grid went down? Uh, so if I understood this question correctly, when the, grid, when the grid comes back on, can this, can, um, Will the SIMO Gen 24 turn the over SIMO on? Am I am I getting this question right, Pat? Do you understand it the same way? That's that's how I kind of understood it, yeah. Yeah, so if the grid uh, yes. turns, turns uh, off or the grid goes down, only the SIMO hybrid will work. So any other inverter on side will basically disconnect. As soon as the grid comes back, the, the um, Simogen 24 will connect back to the grid and the normal inverter will connect back to the grid. All right, they are quite okay. good, um, quite good question. Uh, does CAT5 or 6 cable need to be separated from 240 uh, volt? Uh, this is basically installation regulation. So um you will need to to get the cat 5 and cat 6 cable rated for 240 volt because you're running some people are running the cable next to each other and whatever cable you run with ac needs to be rated for the ac so yes if you can find uh the cat 5 or 6 cable rated at uh 240 then yes all good okay timeline for lg chem uh, uh don't... you go I, I said, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know if there's concrete dates that might know more. Yes, uh, you're, you're right there, Pat. So at the moment, there's no uh, any exact dates. Uh, it, what we're trying to do is really work with BYD, finish that first and then move to LG Chem. So no exact date, uh, but definitely we can, we can check. 
Okay. Uh, How many PV points? Mm -hmm. Can we dedicate with without a battery? Is that part of the same question? Yes, I would say it is. Yeah, I think it's the same same question. So um, this is the thing: you can wire multiple um, uh, PV points if you want. So let me put it this way: so you have one output from the inverter, which is called this PV point. Then if you want to split that, you can split it if you want. The thing, the, the important thing is that you don't go above three kilowatt or else the inverter will shut down. So you can have, for example, uh, an AC cable coming out. It goes to like a small switch, let's say switch board, if you want to call it like that, or backup switch. And there's, there's like three GPOs in it if you want. But the, the thing that you need to make sure is it don't, you don't go above this um, uh, this free kilowatt. Uh, to be honest, the way that I look at it is someone will manually come and plug something in because it's easier uh, to do it this way. If you're thinking of, let's say, having a lot of loads connected, then I will do the full backup that Pat uh, uh, showed before. Yes, okay, that answers the next question. What happens That's if you okay. go above three kilowatts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, is there a special package or price for BYD with the Fronius Gen Plus? Uh, at the moment, there's no, uh, okay. Uh, okay, I think there's another part there with an approved for STCs, right? That's what I can read here. Um, uh, I think it's is, a separate question. Uh, so, with with in terms of price, uh, you know, BYD has the price, French has the price. So you will need to talk to um, some sales partner. I think if I'm not wrong, BYD did some stuff special with the package, but um, on our side at the moment, there's no really special package. Um, the next one is, is 150 of a size is applicable? Uh, without a battery, yes, you can put more than 150, you can put, sorry, 150% to the inverter. Uh, of course, if you don't have a battery, then you can't claim the, all the STCs. If you do, for example, 15 on a 10 kilowatt, you don't have a battery, you don't, you can't claim all the STCs. If you have uh, 15 kilowatt on a 10 kilowatt inverter and you have a battery, then you can claim all the STCs. Okay. Can we trigger the inverter to turn on with the Simo Gen 24? Mm, not 100% sure this one. Sure. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I think we already answered the other question. So I mean, 150% oversizing is fine without a battery and approve for STC. Uh, I I'm not sure about those rules. So that from my understanding, uh, if you don't have a battery, it's basically 133% uh, oversizing what you're allowed to still clean the STCs. But in terms of technical, the inverter can take basically 150%. Okay. Uh, to configure digital output, say, to turn on hot water load, what settings you go? Uh, so what you will need to do, uh, there is a setting in, on our data manager card called um, uh, energy management. You basically change the settings uh, there, which uh, we have actually a guide which can help you there. Um, you can maybe email pv-solution-australia.com. Uh, we can send you the guide if that if that helps. Um, but yeah, there's a guide who shows you how to do all the setup, what contactor you need to buy and everything there. All right. All right. Does it look like we have sure, more questions? More mm, yeah. Uh, looks, look, guys, uh, guys, I think it was a really good session. I think the first time we have so many questions. So 
uh, we will run um, another session like that. There will be more training com uh, coming your way. So please have a look on our website, follow us on Facebook. We are even on Instagram now, if you want to have a look, please feel free to, to send us your, your system that we can maybe promote also on our page. Um, our marketing people are always looking for, for cool photos to promote companies to promote. Uh, we know, for example, the company in Victoria, it's a bit of a hard time, but more than happy to help you guys. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for everyone for um, coming to our uh, to our session uh, today, and we really appreciate um, everything there. But thanks again, guys, and we talk to you guys soon. Yes, thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Thank